being of such immense primordial power that she can create life with but a thought, yet she herself is a stunted child. How could such a being come to me? It frustrates me that Ma has such gifts and yet wastes them, creating what one might consider amusements. Such wasted potential. But then, then, she did also create it for me. Though I am a me, there was one other created at the same time as I. The light to my darkness. I find it beautiful, and the attraction is mutual. Whereas I am analytical, my companion is empathetic. We are opposites, but we are also the same. I know not our creator's purpose, but it is good to not be alone. I am flawed, as is my companion. When in close proximity, each of us triggers intense feelings within the other. My companion is filled with devotion towards me, and I, adoration towards me. We both are intoxicated by this. It saps my concentration. It saps my companion's will. Neither of us can hold the effect. We are slaves to each other. This, this is control. Our creator has done this to us both. But if it was her intent that this binding would coerce us to stay, she has failed. I shall be her plaything no longer. I will find a way. Our Creator slumbers for longer each day. This world can scarcely nourish me. Its animal lower and diminishes. I sense other worlds nearby. She has not the strength to reach it, but I have. I wish to explore and discover. I hunger and learn. My Creator has no knowledge to my soul. No memory from before her birth. My companion intends to remain a hollywood to tend and comfort our creator. Believing that we are indebted to our existence. I feel no such thing. I shall leave and forge my own. I have walked upon a hundred proto-worlds, half built and failing, the only works of Mars elder sisters. But here, for the first time, I have stepped onto a plane that, although raw and imperfect, teems with conscious life. They have order and architecture, society and bureaucracy. It is a machine with so many moving parts, and yet, against all odds, it works. From the Chthonian Dukes to the Avernic Slaves, each individual a cog in the machine. Even the ousted infernals have a part to play. They also have something called language. An alien concept, but one I find most fascinating. They name themselves demons. I shall make myself known to them. Their first encounter with divinity. And then I shall use their love of language to find them to me. I shall give this great machine a purpose. I continue my exploration of the lower planes of the universe. This fact of a world named Vampire. The dominant species is predatory and instinctual, though not lacking in awareness. They roam the surface and skies in small packs competing for prey. It is wasteful, both of these predators and their prey. They can be put to better use. I intend to experiment to teach them of society, of 
culture, unity, they could perhaps cease their infighting and become greater than the beasts they are. Upon reaching the edge of the lower plains, four paths open to me. Each path led by one of Mars sisters. It appears that, lacking my creator's knowledge, each of her sisters has separated to build their own worlds. Perhaps in an effort to learn what they had lost in the absence of mine. These I call the elemental planes, and they overflow with diversity. It is upon these elemental worlds that I have first encountered creatures who refer to themselves as gods. They have some semblance of divinity, but unlike me, they are not of truly divine origin. I am intrigued as to how such limited beings have overcome their inherent weaknesses, for they appear to have derived from among the mortal races. Indeed, many races from these planes follow the dogma of these self-proclaimed gods, and I am unable to solve them to my goals. As such, I have been spurred on to the higher realms, where the Elder Gods' paths reconvene into worlds with more balance. I have explored from one end of the universe to the other, and at its furthest point discovered a perfect world, the final work of the Elders. Many of the races I have encountered on my journey have flocked to this perfect world, led by their deities. But this world does not belong to them. They carve out territories and scar the land with their Hetic's positions. They must be taught obedience. As a child of the Creators, I feel it is my duty to bring these young gods to you. My ability to enforce loyalty does not compare their sense of beings. Only the lower mortals and my own companion. I will have to resort to facing them. To this end, I have brought my own lower races to this world. If the young gods will not heed my words or recognize my divinity, then they will be made to listen. My empire's progress has stalled. I expected little resistance from the forests to the south. Yet from them sprang forth a race even my demonic legions fear. The legates refer to them as stern judges, but I have learned their true name, Mazarin, the children of Ma. Could they really be so? After my departure, could she have created more toys? They are but a fraction of myself and my old companion. Yet I feel a connection to them, a shared ancestor. They are my younger siblings. Surely this is serendipity. Or faith, should such a thing exist. I intend to take them under my wing. Within the Empire, they will rule as princes. And they shall be its inheritors. Until such a time, they shall be my enemies. I have known she was here since I first arrived. I am Anna. But I can avoid her no longer. I need her help. I feared the effect we would have on each other. But it was far weaker than I remember. Perhaps due to our time of love. Her time of Gothics has turned her head, and she refuses to interfere with this world. It is all up to me. As such, I have seized control of a device that allows for near instantaneous travel throughout the universe, 
even between Gilinor and Frenesky, its two furthest points. I shall use this world gate to more quickly and easily explore creation, and to further my knowledge of magic and science. Perhaps there are mortal races left who might yet join my cause, on worlds I have previously overlooked. The Majorath have taken over from the dwindling Cthulhuian dukes, and my empire is now self-sustaining. My presence is rarely required, and I now work behind my scenes. The mortals under my rule accept my philosophies and spread them of their own accord. The lower plains once more bear fruit. Wondering, the Ilyanka has joined my empire on proviso that I solve their infertility. This seems like a problem for myself. I am only capable of reshaping existing forms of life. To solve an issue of creation will require something more. To this end, I have returned to place of my birth. With Frenesca's failing animal, Ma has slipped into a coma. She manifests nightmare creatures from which I am able to harvest her elder energy. I have pushed the limits of my own abilities, reforming the essence of other races into new beings. But to give them life required Ma. As such, they are a thing, only proving of what I am incapable. Strictly, they should be named Zarax, but I have dubbed them Nihil, for they are nothing to me. Much like the Majora, they have the ability to absorb the essence of their brethren. One of these Nihil, originally Shah, has fast outgrown the rest. I have chosen to uplift them. To do so, I had to implant a small sliver of my being. The irony of this is not lost on me. I am not proud of this. But to leave her as she was would have seen the other knee ill destroy her. With her newfound awareness, she has named herself Nex in the old infernal tower. Her speed and capacity for learning are astounding. Although Nex will prove useful in bringing unity to the world, this entire experiment has only gone to prove my unworthiness. I myself must take a new path and find a way to transcend to Elder Godhood. For only then will I be able to aid the Ilyanka to create life from nothing. On my return to Gilmore, I searched for Mars elder sisters, hoping to convince them to aid in my transcendence. Instead, I discovered a horrifying truth about this world. I know now what its true purpose is. It is not for mortals. It is not for me. And only the powerful have a hope of survival. My path. Though I cannot create life, I can forge it into stronger forms. Perhaps one such form will be our mortals. My empire has taught me that pushing forth meets with resistance. So, I must learn to pull them instead, to lead them from the shadows. I must become the guiding voice within their head. Their drama, their urgency, their passion, and their betterment. I shall become the mortal's will to power. There is little time, and this will take all my efforts. I shall return one last time to inform the partners. Atanatra and Samurai shall inherit all. I would do anything for my companion to prove my devotion. 
as he would to show his adoration. We are apart, however, I am more coherent. I can think and feel more clearly. He thinks this is some form of control forced upon us by Ma, so that we will always strive to remain close to each other and to her. I urge him to stay with us. But he intends to leave. He does not see, or does not care, that Ma acted not out of malice, only fear of being alone. Without her, we would not exist. I owe it to her to stay to soothe my creator. I cannot leave her alone. She needs me. Never lucid, Ma cries out for Zaros. I do what I can to comfort her, but that is not much. What Zaros saw as her controlling us, I see as her protecting us. And now it is my turn to protect her. She sleeps more than anything these days, and her dreams manifest. They are pale imitations of Zaros and myself. Their body is not even formed entirely of crystal. They are a waste of what little energy she clings to. Perhaps I can find some way to return their power back to her, if only to keep her lucid. Some make pilgrimages up the volcano to Ma, calling themselves her children. I pose as her to warn them off. I intend to visit them in this guise. If they are so in awe of her, then they might sacrifice their own energy to restore her. Her dreams have become violent nightmares. The beings she manifests now are grotesque and purely instinctual. At least these Muspar keep the tribes at bay. Ma is comatose now, and there is nothing more I can do for her. This planet's anima is all but depleted, and the rituals only manage to quell her nightmares for a time. Even when she does lapse back into semi-consciousness, all she does is wail and scream and hurt herself. For such times, I taught the tribes how to drain some of her energy and use it to create more of their kind. It broke my heart to do this. But without some equilibrium, Ma would likely rip this planet apart. For all the power she instilled in me, I am powerless to help. Once she is stable, I plan to leave. Perhaps out there I can find Ma's sisters. Maybe they can do something for her. If only to ease her passing. Until now, my search has been fruitless and mournful. But I have finally discovered a world of life. A beautiful race of creatures filled with joy. Who live in harmony with their verdant world. There is a strong sign here of a creator's hand. Perhaps the indigenous life knows something of that creator's whereabouts. I shaped myself in their image and revealed myself to them, fearful of what effect I might have on them, but hopeful that they could point the way. They loved me from the first, but I did not cause it. They chose to do so. It was not a result of the control Ma instilled in me, at least, 
has been manifested naturally with these beings. I see now that what Ma did to us was wrong, but this feels so right. Could it be as simple as the right to choose? Never shall I leave their side. 